Lessons from Esther. I want to encourage you, it's such a rich book, there is so much in it, to actually read the story of Esther with me this week, as I can't go through all the details, and we're just doing tad bit snippets of it as we study God's word and we have these devotions. So we know the story where Mordecai, her uncle that we heard about yesterday, refuses to bow down to one of the king's second in charge, which is Haman. And this enrages Haman so much that he not only wants to get back at Mordecai, but the whole nation of Israel and comes up with a plan that everyone finds out about, that he's going to build these gallows and hang the Israelites because Mordecai wouldn't bow down to him. And when Esther hears of these horrendous plans and that she has to actually go to the king even when she hasn't been announced or invited, she realizes she needs help. And let's see how she finds her help. We go to Esther chapter 4 verse 16. Go and gather together all the Jews of Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will do the same. And then, though it is against the law, I will go in to see the king. If I must die, I must die. Sure. What an environment to be in. The whole nation is looking at you. And yet, what does she do? She calls a fast. Now, we live in the new covenant and I just wanted to bring some light as to what that fasting does. What does it mean when we go and pray and seek his face? I love to fast. Sometimes I fast food or sugar or TV or technology. You don't have to be limited in what you're fasting. But what it does is, is an intentional time of saying something that satisfies my body, my senses. I'm giving up so that I can completely zone in and hear what God wants me to do, what he wants me to say, what, where am I going, that I have no sensory overload with the things of the flesh. And I believe God wants us to understand that, that when we are in deep trouble, when we need help, when we need to understand things, there's something very special about fasting and praying. It's not a hunger strike. It's not to get God to move where you can go with your to-do list, where I've, I have these needs and wants and I haven't had food for three days, so you have to move. No, it is definitely not that. In fact, let's look at it in Matthew chapter 6, verse 16 to 18. It says, And when you do fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. I believe as we just take out the noise of the world around us, as we choose to be intentional in hearing his voice, finding out what is his plans for us, the reward is so intimate. The reward is that personal connection that I've given up something because I love being with you. And I want to finish in Acts 13 verse 2. Actually, I've got two more scriptures. It says, While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Here we see the early church of Acts being so intentional about praying and fasting and God gives them the plan of what to do with Barnabas and Paul. And then lastly, I want to remind you of one of my favorite scriptures. In fact, most devotions has the scripture in it, which is Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. If you are in a crisis... I mean, Esther was in a crisis. The whole nation was in turmoil. She had a man that was plotting to murder everyone that she knew. She had a king that had so many rules. Could she go to him? Not really. But what was her statement? If I die, I die. 
But before she went into that king's throne room, she made sure she had fasted and prayed and knew that she could come boldly into the King of Kings throne room and the Lord of Lords. So do that today. Go boldly into his throne room. Whatever you are struggling with, whatever you are facing, pray and seek God and find the reward of his intimate presence, his help in a time of need. Always remember, you are highly favored and deeply loved.